Local Lens. I'm Susan Heisinger, Executive Director of Wallingford Community Television, and we're here today to discuss 41 South Main Street as a piece of architecture on the parade ground. With me for this conversation is Erin Benham. She is the current owner, the one who did all the research about the very tough research about what is this house, who owned it, why is it so interesting, and one of the reasons it is interesting <laughs> is the architecture. It's a Queen Anne style, T-shaped with four bays. And when I first saw it, I couldn't figure out what four bays were, Erin. Can you give me some <laughs> sense of what you think was meant by that? I was puzzled by that myself. Um, I do, there's some obvious bays, the ones with the stained glass window on one side of the building. There was one that was on the back side of the building that um, I'm assuming the American Legion building, um, when they took over, added to it. it. It appeared to be that it was probably a kitchen type of thing for them when they added on to the back. So I think a bay was missing from there because when we did do start a restoration we did realize there was a window back there mm -hmm. we could see from the original um, structure of the building that a window was cut out there that that was removed the other one i would say is um to this side of the town hall where it was where the front porch wrapped around to it appears, we think, that the third bay, we think that one of those long windows that we have on that side was actually a door because all the windows, there are nine windows on the first floor of that house, um, are all the same size except for that one in the middle, which we believe was probably a door um, and changed at some time. The fourth bay, just I just it's don't... still a mystery. It's still a mystery, and my only guess is when you walked into the building as the American Legion, um, to the left was the entrance to go downstairs. There was a, um, a concrete staircase put in oh, yes. to the, the building, which was clearly not part of the original building. Um, but when you look at the span there, I'm guessing that had to be the, a bay because mm -hmm. it's, an, it's an awful big span to go with no windows. And um, there was, we don't know what was there because they put in this, we, I used to call it the little hut, um, which we had every intention when we bought it to remove it, which mm -hmm. we were able to do because it was not part of the original structure of the home. But then we changed it. Our, actually, our contractor changed our minds of you know, go back to the council and see if they'll let you add to it, you know, go up on that little jut that was there. Jut there <laughs> versus taking it off because it's sort of a nice little space. You might, you might want it. Queen Anne style <laughs> is a common term of um, homes across the nation, but in New England, they said T-shaped was particular to New England and was referred to as res a reserved style of Queen Anne. So Queen Anne can be quite elaborate. Right but New Englanders tended to be more puritanical and, and reserved, and mm -hmm. so they tended to have a more symmetrical approach to, at least my very limited understanding from quick research, very reserved approach to the, the style of the home. But this home also had a lot of flourishes mm -hmm. that yes, were unusual. Mm -hmm. The windows made the outside very exciting. Was that part of the appeal of the house to you? Yes, it was very much the appeal to the windows I just thought were, I mean, they were just stunning. And to, you know, the first time I went into the home, it was, um, the sun was setting. And so the sun was coming, you know, through the glittering through the windows. They're just so, they're so beautiful and very intricate stained glass windows mm -hmm. that um, we had you know, as soon as we bought the house, it was one of the first things we did have them removed. We had them, you know, someone so they come be in restored? to be restored. We were, you know, afraid to have any, all this construction going on in these house with these gorgeous windows. Um, and they're very large windows. Mm -hmm. So we did have them removed and, and learned a lot about the windows also from the person who restored them. They were very showy. They were made to be very showy stained glass windows at that time all of the intricate was on the outside of the house so your neighbors could see all the showiness mm -hmm. um, and she said you you probably want to reverse them so as the homeowner you get, get to see them. you know because there's bubble glass yeah. that was all on the outside of the house and so we did have them reverse the main ones mm -hmm. that are sitting out and then there's smaller ones uh, we didn't reverse those because those actually we were able just to board up. They never came out of the home. It was the main ones on the staircase that came out. So 
That was interesting how intricate, first of all, the patterns are and the lead bars going through them that they don't really make stained glass like that anymore, but the size of them, they had to. Of course, my contractors were a nervous wreck taking these things out of it and they all had their own little coffin that the windows went into and were, were brought to Southington for repair and were there for many months, actually. It was a very happy day when they came back and we were able to put them back up, but then board it again. <laughs> yes. So the contractors, were they restoration contractors? Were they particular? Nope, they or were a local they contractor. Local? We used the Cipriani Construction Company that did a lot of our work on South Whittlesea, and he was the one that originally went in. Rich Cipriani went into the house with me just to see, is this doable? When we went into the house, there was still a service bar upstairs. So our currently our living space was literally a service bar sitting in the middle of what now is our master bedroom. Mm -hmm. I had to like sort of figure it out if, you know, will everything fit in here? I wanted a staircase, clearly, because I knew that was intact when we bought the home. Um, we knew people that were doing some of the demolishing inside the house, the gutting of the house. All the plumbing was taken out, all the copper wire, all the mechanicals. Was, everything all of was removed from the house. Nothing was in working order. We knew that was all gone, but they did, and one of the gentlemen that worked on that, doing that, saying, we have, that st we have the staircase and we have every piece of it. When we walked in, we could see one big banister of the um, but all the spindles were, were, we assumed, were gone. Is it maho mahogany? It's mahogany, yeah. And this, the front fireplace is also mahogany, which was intact, but um, the pieces of it were also, but they were on the floor. We could see that they were there in shape, but they must have, like, started taking them down, and then, thank God, they didn't go any further and, you know, and toss them. But we were told that the banister was all there and that they even numbered them so that they would know exactly how to put the staircase back together. Because that, to me, was like the grand entrance of the house to look up at those windows. Um, so there's also a window above the front door, which is maybe part of the Queen Anne style, a, a transom, I think A transom, it's yep. And, like, the original air conditioning system. Yeah, it might. And we realized too that we still have that window too. Mm -hmm. It is hanging in our in our cellar. The original window. Mm -hmm. It was. We did ask them to keep it because that's not in the front of our house anymore. The door we put on. We realized it was a double door. We could tell that when we started doing our restoration with the hinges. Mm -hmm. And not only was it a double door, you walked into a very small entranceway and another double door which we researched doors were very difficult for that house i was glad i only had the front one to deal with um we researched getting the second double doors but it it would be very cumbersome you know and i'm glad i didn't do it but we could clearly tell that you would enter that home shut the outside door and then you would have another set of doors that to enter the home with and I believe that's a little bit tied to the idea of a public porch yes. and a public space. Right. That they still wanted to be welcoming and open, but they still needed the privacy. See. So that second level right. of doorway yeah. was to And we thought that. about it, too, because presently we, we can't open our front door. You know, the whole house is open, so we don't have that. But um, it would have been cumbersome to do. We thought about doing a glass door and all sorts of things, but... That is where you enter to the first fireplace, and so we didn't we didn't really want to take away from that, so we we chose not to do the second. Now you just door. said first fireplace. First How fireplace. many fireplaces are in this? Two, home? two, two. That, and I believe there was probably I a thought third. There was a third. Yeah, yeah, there was probably a third, but that I think the American Legion must have removed whenever when they built that back section. It, mm -hmm. it appeared because there's some chimney work back there, and the house does have two chimneys, so I'm I'm guessing there was another one back there as well mm -hmm. um, that was utilized in, in some in some way back there. But it was that was the part of the house that a little difficult to understand, like exactly how it was set up. Um, that's where the pizza oven was. So <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing whenever they did this, they put the pizza oven in, it's not realizing that they had no way of getting that pizza oven out of there if mm -hmm. they needed to do so. So <laughs> did anyone ever come in and talk to you about the fireplaces, how unique the fireplaces themselves were in terms of how the flutes worked and the narrowness or anything of that? Only nature? when we started having work done on them, extensive work had to be done on both both we had put it's their gas working fireplaces now they're not wood that was a decision we had trying to make and 
I just decided, like, I'll, I'm going to go the easy way here. I don't want to be lucking in wood. So mm -hmm. they're both gas inserts. Um, easier said than done when we made that decision because they're much smaller than an average fireplace now. Mm -hmm. So it did take us a while. We had some people helping us working with those inserts. Um, and they told us a little bit about on how they were working and the flues. Both of them still have you know, the big working flue that we still will use to open and shut it, and those are the original. Mm -hmm. We were able to keep those um, in the fireplaces, but there's um, inserts in both of them. So the story of, of the restoration was provided for you as yes. a present from your daughter? Yes. <laughs> well, I have so many pictures of the home that, you know, people would ask to see it, and so, you know, instead of always showing them on my iPad, so we, we did... Um, not all of them, but a lot of them that we put in here. That is pretty much how, when we entered the home, what it looked like. And you can see um, pieces of the staircase, but no banisters, no no spindles. And those are the windows you were just And those are the windows. The, the those are the four that you see directly. And then on either side, there's smaller ones that people don't really even realize and unless they're walking. If they go upstairs, mm -hmm. um, um, they realize that is there. Um, and then... And then probably the next one that was a big discovery for us was the flooring. Um, it was parquet, an unusual parquet, right? Very unusual parquet. We have actually, um, I'm trying to, like one, three, four, probably five different floorings in the house, the main house. Um, when we bought it, it was one big room. It was clearly not that way as, as a home. And we could tell because of the flooring. You, mm -hmm. you enter... Um, to a beautiful mosaic, which is still there. And then the front fireplace had a parquet flooring um, up to the staircase was all parquet. Then you, there was a band that is still there, a parquet band, but then there's another flooring that has decorated parquet pieces in the middle of the floor. And then as you move on to what we now is, use as our living area, living room area, is another flooring, which, which was just a, a an oak kind of floor. But you could tell that the floors, they didn't create all those floors to go together. There was actually walls that were the different rooms. So mm -hmm. when we were redoing the floors, we were very fortunate because on the second floor of the home is um, parquet bath. It was a, a parquet bathroom, mm -hmm. unusual, but we could tell it was the bathroom. Um, and we were very grateful for it because we needed to do a lot of repair on the first floor. So a lot of our repair of our floor came from the second, second floor. floor. Um, a lot of the pieces of the um, the house were that way. Um, our window casings, um, anything that was maybe not such great shape, we had two more floors to to go up and use. We, you know, we started with the third, knowing we wouldn't be living up there, um, and so we were able to use a lot of those um, pieces to to match, you know, the the, um, the casings of the home. Yeah, I think I had heard that that was a European kind of thing, the parquet floors, and that was one of the fascinations that Roger Austin had, um, even though he was very much, you know, wanting to represent America. Right. He was also very curious about uh, the the idea of being a wealthy person with prestige and the things that were prestigious mm -hmm. in other parts of the world. So the fireplaces design and the floor design, I believe, were influenced strongly by what was current in, in Europe at the time. Right. And the front fireplace is very c clear. A lot of people thought that we put in, because um, there is sort of granite tiling around that mahogany fireplace mm -hmm. that looks like something that would be done currently, yeah. um, made to look old and to tell people no that that, that is that, that was, was original that I mean, was Mr. Austin yes and it yes. very that was a um, a very ornate mm -hmm. fireplace compared to the front one because yeah. the front one you know the further one that's into the home was not um, yeah. bigger a little bit bigger um, and we're it might have still had to be functional in some way I, we're almost guessing that probably was uh, the kitchen area is our guess yeah. or or quarters for you know mm -hmm. for their service i mean the look that appears of the house that you know there was a back staircase to the house that went up to the third floor that appears that that's probably where they had um you know help from the house that lived up there mm -hmm. um so it does appear that that's the front fireplace was more functional as maybe a cooking area and so forth yeah whereas 
I know the architect we were working with was fascinated with the beams in the in the attic, and yeah. uh, fortunately, he's not in the neighborhood anymore to ask him and, and yeah. have my memory uh, jogged about it. But he was just like, "Oh my God, they were doing this at this time at this era. It, it was apparently quite modern the way the the." Uh, rafters were put together on, yes. on the third floor. Yeah, that's what we were told. Yeah, okay. yeah it's, it's quite an expanse of room up there. Mm -hmm. um, and very functional space. I mean, it was, there's, as I recall, I, I would guess at least two bedrooms, if not three, on that third floor. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been up there in a very long time. <laughs> we have pulled down stairs that we can access it. Um, but we don't, it's not utilized for anything. But mm -hmm. I did take some things from there um, because all the bedrooms in the entire house had, um, which was, I felt unusual for that time, had built-in dressers. Every closet had a built-in dresser inside the closet with these wonderful, wonderful brass handles. Handles, the knobs, yes. Yes, all of them, yeah. which now are in my kitchen. That was, you know, I had them all restore to use on my actual Denny Wimet things. was our architect and he also was very fascinated by the knobs on the doors and, yes. the, and the draws so he just quite elaborate he, for something yes. that was inside of a closet yeah his eyes would just pop I, it was just so exciting to go through the building with someone who actually knew about architecture right and it was like oh my god this is just amazing and you're looking at it and saying okay it looks not quite amazing to me. Can you give me a little bit more information? <laughs> um, but he, he was so thrilled. I mean, he spent hours and hours drawing it and tr and trying to, to figure out how we would make it a public space. Yeah. Um, but it was really designed to be a home. It's it's really wonderful that it turned into a home again. Did you know about the railroad story before I shared it with you? Did no. anyone ever tell you anything no, about I the did fact not. that this house in in its outer dexterity was could be made anywhere because of Sears and Roebuck. Yeah, no, I never yeah. knew that. Yeah. Sears tried to make it as easy as possible. You could write them and get a free catalog. You go through the catalog and pick the house of your dream. Prices in the catalog did not include the ladder, the foundation, or the construction labor. This whole house came on a railroad car and oh, was yeah. unpacked in boxes and put together like a huge puzzle. You know, there was a lot of reference to the parade grounds and the trolley mm -hmm. and how important that trolley was to that area mm -hmm. and the, to ease moving around. And I'm, I'm guessing that also added to it that right. there was, you know, easy access certainly to the railroad station. Mm -hmm. No, but I did not know that. Uh, it was very fascinating to find that the, tr the doorway was the doorway and the second doorway was in the home in Arizona that I saw that looked very very mm -hmm. very similar the outside windows and the way the um, kind of an unusual slope under the windows it's yes. not it's not an angle it's sort of a, an arch right um, and that that was not possible prior because you didn't have any way to cut wood Right, uh, circular before it's, the it's turn still, of the century. It was still difficult, and it's still repairing difficult today. those. <laughs> yes. So the, that whole turn, it was so much a turn of the century right. home, and representing the the new technology of the time. I, I guess at one point you said, "Well, maybe we won't have the porch," and then you asked if you could when you found out more, and you, that little section was saved from the entry to the. Right. Our original bid when we went through with the town, um, we had to go back. We went twice. Mm -hmm. We had that little staircase that we had originally we were going to remove. It appears from the outside it's two stories. It's just it, it's just a very large ceiling. Mm -hmm. But we, we kept that, um, and we had to go back to the town to ask for mis permission to do that because our original bid was to remove it. So mm -hmm. it was a change to the outside of the building. We were able to do that because it was not the original piece of the building so we were able to add to it because it was not original if that was original part of the house we, that would not have been an option for us well, how did you determine what spindles and how to make the porch look like it was part of the historical property i wanted it i i wanted it not to feel like we were closed in so it was really important to me that we didn't have to have railings if we didn't need to um the pillars were the easy part because we spent just a lot of time looking at other people's pillars in particular around the neighborhood mm -hmm. um, that had porches that they original part of the house mm -hmm. you know many of them have 
porches that they added to the homes, but um, the original porches of the homes. So we duplicated a lot of those pillars. And with the picture, we, I mean, it's a very fuzzy picture, we were able to see it was not ornate, ornate at all. And I wanted to be able to sit on the porch and be able to look out and not have a railing. As soon as you come off our porch, you're, we're on the parade ground. Mm -hmm. So we had to make sure that the way we do our steps, we were able to do that without having a height that by law we'd have to have the railing. So mm -hmm. um, that was important to us. But we had to, like um, I had said earlier, that we were very grateful for this fuzzy picture that the town had because we were able to go back to the town council and say, because in, in our bid was to preserve the house to the best we could to its original. Um, and clearly the original house had a porch. And so that was our selling point, and they approved it. And so we were able to... But we lived in the home for a while before the porch went on, and mm -hmm. then the porch went on. Was there any aha moment with the construction crew when they maybe discovered something that was either really old or different or really challenging? It was funny when we were upstairs. Um, one of the first things we did was the, the back staircase because that was access that we knew as we were building where we were going to live on the first floor we knew that our second phase of our construction would be the apartment on the second floor so we had to prepare for that when we were doing it so mm -hmm. we knew that on the third floor probably the air conditioning system for them would go up there mm -hmm. so we had to make sure that that was all that we could access and get up there before we blocked off that second staircase um, knowing that we wouldn't be utilizing that and they did come across a room up there I remember them calling me and saying you got to come and see this room and we really have no idea what it was it was a very tiny tiny room no windows but it was definitely a room because it was completely wallpapered but it was in the middle of the house um, it, it very bizarre we just don't know what it is it you know it's, it's bigger than the closets there but it was definitely this little like almost this hidden room up on the third floor. Were you able to, to preserve any of the wallpaper or anything? I did for a while, and it was funny. On the second floor, the wallpaper was very nautical. Mm -hmm. It was, it, you know, it just, it threw me when they, you know, they'd say, Aaron, look at right. the, their sailboats. And it just, I just didn't expect to see sailboat wallpaper in a house built in 1890. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't have it anymore, but... Mm -hmm. And that was probably the rest of the wallpapers were very ordinary on the second floor, which was clearly where you know their um, bedrooms must have been. Um, but it was very, very nautical. Hmm. A lot of sailboats, beaches. Um. <laughs> the Arizona home that looked like this, um, she actually was able to preserve a lot of the wallpaper, and a lot of it was very um, ornate floral patterns. Yeah. Um, so I just didn't know if we this didn't particular have any one have any floral pattern. Now, and wallpaper. in the main part of the house, when we bought it, the entire main structure of the house was, of course, that's when people are looking at me, are you crazy, was, mm -hmm. you know, that dark brown paneling. Paneling, yeah. Like the entire house. And so when that came down, there was nothing, there was nothing behind it. So perhaps that was there. Right along. Probably. When the American Legion changed it over, that... They took, you know, I'm, I'm, guess, I'm guessing they had to have not sheetrock walls, um, plaster, plaster, and we were expecting a lot of that. We had a lot of that in the ceilings, a lot mm -hmm. of plaster in the ceilings, but in the main part of the house, not too much in the walls because I'm, I'm guessing that the American Legion had that removed when they put the lovely dark brown brown paneling <laughs> <laughs> up in his place. We had a lot of dark brown paneling. <laughs> <laughs> so the the primary features are the style itself, the mm -hmm. external style, the Queen Anne style, the the windows, um, the windows. with the <clears throat> frills, yeah. the prefabbed pressed wood, um, curved carvings of the uh, little frills. Yeah. Um, did you keep the pink? It was painted pink, I think, and pink and gray. Did. What, I don't remember what you did with the, I haven't looked in a while, what colors for the outside did you paint? Did you restore it with colors of the time or did you do something we more did, and up it's, to date? We did, and it is the gray, and then we have the rosettes that are around the front of the house, near the stained the side where the stained glass are, probably very close to all mm -hmm. where all the bays were. Um, mm -hmm. 
that we put back in that we could tell somewhat were there because some of them were still yeah. on the home like yeah. maybe just one so we knew certainly just one wasn't up here they must have done so the one with the driveway side that was pretty intact that we could tell the way it was set up and that we tried to mimic that it took a while though because we had to have some of those made um, to match it mm -hmm. was hard to find them I, I found some since then that I have them all made, but I wasn't able to find them when I needed them. But so restoring a, an older home is a labor of love. Yes. A love for the community, a love for what it represents in the town. And uh, you've done an excellent job of keeping a piece of history for us, so thank you very much. We are running out of time here on Local Lens. Um, any one last picture you might want to uh, share from the book? Probably the, I'm guessing the flooring and how, what they did look like. A lot of people know what they did look like, um, but to see what they look like now. And I still remember the day that I walked up the cellar stairs to take a look after they finished mm -hmm. the floors. And, and actually these are a shot looking into the room and it was just, you know, it was just magnificent. And, um, this was something that was really important to me when we, we had a hard time finding flooring, someone that would work on the flooring. We had many people that said, your best bet is just to rip them up and start mm -hmm. over. And Thankfully I'd say, you didn't. No. no, I don't, don't yeah. use him. I don't want him back now. Anyone mm -hmm. that said that, I don't want him back. Because then I was afraid something would go wrong and they yeah, would just replace them. They would them. have to replace them. Yeah. These guys were just magnificent. They even went to Pennsylvania to come very close to trying to match the one floor that we could not save well enough mm -hmm. and it was part of our kitchen now which was a pretty expansive of floor um, but I remember when they were doing the parquet and watching them go up and down the stairs you know like they were putting a jigsaw puzzle together you know oh, I think this is gonna fit and we were very thankful that the second floor had a parquet bathroom. <laughs> well, when there's concerts on the green now, there might be more people knocking on your door yes. again, Aaron, because you've shared this lovely story of saving Roger Austin's house. Um, so thank you so much for joining us on Local Lens. It was my pleasure. Thank you.